<laughs> and now for the hilarity of what is Therapist in Conversation. Good evening, everybody. Tonight we're going to be discussing guess what? Since it's December, not the C word, no, we're going to be describing and looking at what's going to be happening next year. We're looking forward. Your goals, your aspirations, how you feel about what's going to be coming up, what you'd really like to be doing, what you'd really like to be seeing in 2021. It seems that the universe counts a bit like I do because 2020 just wasn't there. So let's have a go then. Angela, what are you looking forward to? Um, do you know, I've quite enjoyed 2020. I know you said 2020 wasn't there and, and you, you said this is December. We're going live in January. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, what am I looking forward to? I think I'm just looking forward to maybe spending some time in the real world with real people. I think that's, that's my key one, I think. Okay, so we're not real. <laughs> we're face virtual. Face, we're virtually real. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. In person. That's why I put the, the, the bunny ears, the quotes bunny, on there. Oh, the bunny ears, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but it's still December when we when we do this. In January, January the 5th is still close enough to December. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Trust me, when you've got a birthday in January, it oh, doesn't matter. Oh. It really doesn't matter. So looking forward to the rest of January and the rest of the year, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking forward to for this year? Me? Coming? Oh, I'm looking forward to having a massive audience on this. Because <laughs> the streaming and everything is going to be not from my eyes, it's going to actually be from the computer. <laughs> And it's going to be wonderful. So I'm looking forward to being another year older, very quickly. My friend will be looking forward to being the same age as me again, because she gets older than me in, in November. So she's always a year older than me for like two months. And I enjoy that immensely. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to take it as it comes. I'm looking forward to talking to more people. I'm looking forward to online courses that I'm writing, getting out there and getting done and people actually wanting to have them and take them up. That would be great. But also I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Just seeing what comes. Because I think it could be a really interesting year and not in the Chinese proverb way, but a nice, interesting year. I think perhaps we will actually manage to get some hybrid meetings done. I think that the, the way that we're going with the virtual networking, et cetera, is going to become a hybrid situation where you can go out if you want to, or you can stay indoors with your gin and tonic and your slippers on and your jammy bottoms if you want to, and network away with your top half, just being totally businesslike. So... I, I lived that life for like five years I still was in corporate working from home it was great no difference no difference what we missed then again I used to spend my life in scrubs so it didn't really matter I was, on. In, I was in a form of <laughs> I'm glad I didn't hear that properly <laughs> so Victoria what are you going to be up to um, I'm looking forward to seeing live theatre again uh, so as a drama therapist I really miss walking into a theatre and watching a live show and you know listening to live music and things like that as well so yeah I really want to reconnect with the arts again and um, because I'm newly qualified as well it's been quite a strange year to actually land a job so I'm still in that like in between phase um, trying to pick up freelance work and things um, which is a bit difficult. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually working as well. So yeah, these two things I'm really looking forward to in 2021. Groovy. I mean, yeah, I, I'm thinking every time I see films and things of people at music festivals and going into theatres and going, you know, going to the cinema, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking at it and going, wow, there's going to be a time when we're going to say, we used to do that. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. and actually having to say, that was a novelty. That was something yeah. we did. That strangely is a, an idea that your brain is getting very used to this stuff very fast. Mm -hmm. So talking of that, Dave. 
Um, okay. Um, Apple's got a really big year coming up. Whatever happens in the outside world, it's a massive year for Apple. So a lot of my hopes are kind of tied up with that. So things like the, the launch of the specializations for professionals, so they can be recognized and celebrated for the work that they do and the things that interest them, which is going to help the public to find professionals quicker, easier and more effectively. Is, is something I'm really looking forward to seeing come to fruition. That's been in the pipeline for about eight months. Um, I'm really looking forward to the international projects going live. Um, and we're announcing more of those details on those at our end of year event um, on the end of this week, actually. Mm. Um, so looking forward to that. Um, but one thing that we did this week was preparation for a hope for the future, which was our panel conversation. And the thing that came up over and over again was collaboration. Yeah. I really, really hope that 2021 is going to be the year where the therapeutic community collaborates, not just writes letters and asks everybody to endorse a letter. Mm. That's not collaboration. Collaboration means actually sitting around and going, this is what we are as a sector, this is who we are, this is our identity. However that fits, but we've got to be leading the therapeutic support system for everyone that's been through 2020. Yeah, this was, this was in fact the, the energy that brought this together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is what, you know, my hope is that this is another one of those kindling little fires across the sector that are burning and there's lots of them yeah. that this now turns into a forest fire that goes out and goes mental health emotional well-being is two-thirds of our human condition yeah. let's actually start working with the two-thirds rather than just the one-third that we have been for the last 40 years yeah and a little so that's, bit my, more. that's my big hope is it becomes yeah. a year of collaboration and meaning I, 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 I get the feeling that it's there, it's kind of, as you say, bubbling under the surface, waiting to, just for somebody to put their head above the parapet, which we're, we're doing now, everybody here anyway on this group, is yeah. starting to put their heads above the parapet and say, I'm here. All you have to do is connect with me because mm. I'm open to being connected with. And I think that that's basically the human condition, really. We are social animals, we need to collaborate. Otherwise, we don't survive. Yeah. And as a sector, we've got very used to be being siloed into our disciplines and our modalities mm. and everything else. And 2020 has shown us that actually that doesn't serve us as a sector any any good, but it doesn't serve the public any good at all. No. And they need us now more than ever to be solid and to be united and be together and... I hope 2021 is going to be the year where that starts to form in a really kind of meaningful way. So the public get to understand that the support is there. It's meaningful. It works. It's about connecting to it. Yeah. Susan Humphreys, what you be? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, 2021, a reflection of this year, I think, a lot of us realised how much we took our freedom for granted and what we could do in our everyday life. I think with all the restrictions and the lockdown... Oh, okay, I'm going to stop you there. I want uh -huh. you to, we're looking forward. We're not looking back tonight. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's fine. And it's just to say springing forward, mm -hmm. I think that what we couldn't do the last few months, we are all going to be springing forward to do next year. For me personally, I had to close uh, down my Crystal Souls business, uh, my therapy business, but I'm now very, very happy that I've now managed to launch my Alchemy Zen holistic business. And next year, I've already started uh, yoga courses. I want to do a coaching course. So I want to diverse. I want to crack on um, getting more qualifications so that I can just help more people next year because I think people are going to need some help and support as we start getting back into the role as our tears are actually lifted. Yeah, we need to get back to normal normality. Yeah, definitely. Sue. 
so a lot going on. I am looking forward to hugging people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love hugging people, whether it's friends, family, clients. I'm a hugger, so I'm really looking forward to hugging. Um, I agree that collaboration is absolutely going to be the way forwards um, for the, the therapy industry as a whole. And I, I already work very well with lots of referral networks. And I think, you know, that's that's such a vital move that we are looking after our clients as uh, in holistic way and kind of recommending and referring out going actually I'm not the best person for this let's bring in this person or this person or this person and we do that um, very much as part of the, the chronic fatigue recovery process that I work with um, we always work in referral teams I am looking forward to GPs and the NHS actually taking on the chronic fatigue recovery model because we are inching our way forwards um we've got more and more gps kind of coming on board it's getting really exciting and to get a very cohesive approach to me chronic fatigue recovery will be amazing and there's going to be a lot more people needing those services as we move forwards and on a personal um I've got kind of two sides to my business, but on, on the, the stuff that I do, the energy work, I have multiple programmes pinging around in my brain and I'm looking forward to delivering them all. So it's going to be a busy year. It's going to be an exciting year. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Groovy. I'm looking forward a little bit to my my shaman friend, Bola, has just put the Krantara that the global shamanic summit that he's been organizing for this year and had to be put off he's got the dates for next year and it's in october next year in Kathmandu. <laughs> oh i have my eyes set on that don't tell andrew <laughs> <laughs> i hope he doesn't watch this then <laughs> i don't think he does <laughs> i think he just likes it and then it goes on <laughs> As most men do, <laughs> husbands, mm. husbands, and husbands and things. When you when you're doing something, yes, I'll just like that on Facebook and not tell her that I didn't actually look at it. Or is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Could sorry. Can we jump back into your general sweeping out sweeping generalizations with it? <laughs> just for you. So, what else is going to be happening then? What are we going to be doing? You know, I was just thinking, I just said I was looking forward to seeing people in the real world. I hadn't even thought about what my business looks like for next year. <laughs> so yeah, well, so, so for my business, I'm looking at the fact that I've got some new therapies coming online. I'm as I, some new training that was completed in 2020. Um, so that's quite exciting and new options and um, packages. So it's just a case now of, of working out how to tell people about them in a sensible manner. It gets people excited. So that's my challenges for 2021. So what about what about your challenges, Victoria? Is it is it just going to be about getting a job or is it is there something else that you've got that you see as a challenge that you would like to best with next year? Um yeah, at the moment the forefront is getting a, a job and actually being able to practice because I've not held a session session since March which was a trainee session and that feels like about a million years ago now um, and also because it was face to face as well and I kind of wonder like you know what's it going to look like in early 2021 if I do get a job like you know I will will have to still keep social distance which has became so normal now but I struggle to think what that looks like in a professional setting um but yeah, like I just want to also challenge myself and like, you know, doing other CPD events and things like that as well. But I think because I'm newly qualified, I'm at that stage of, yeah, I'll do anything. But yeah, it's kind of sitting down and thinking, OK, like what do I want to actually learn next? Not just do it all at once. Like, you know. Well, like I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just a stacker, aren't you? Yeah, stack coaches. I'm, I'm, I'm a certificate junkie. I'll, I'll admit it. People that know me know that. It's fine. 
It's when Kellogg starts sending you them in the packet that you start <laughs> worrying. Ooh. <laughs> hey, that was below the belt. <laughs> no, when... when certificate, it's a certificate, I'm happy. It's a certificate. It's a certificate. She's going to be happy even if it's... it's a certificate, yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll send you a certificate and that for your Christmas. Oh, I said the C word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, it's fair. It's fair. I was my mum was doing a clear out and found some of my old certificates, so I shared it with the group that I was training with, who liked to tease me about my certificate collection. And I said that I'd found one for the fact that I'd swum fifteen yards and I had a certificate for it. <laughs> I might have been about four or five, but it's fine. It's still a certificate. <laughs> I like I like the ones that you get for doing not a lot at all because there was just for turning up basically. <laughs> um, I, I recently got one of, for that just for turning up onto a, a course that we were doing on applied storytelling. Brilliant course, great course. And um, we learned a lot on there, did quite a lot of stuff. But then somebody decided that they wanted it, they, they thought it would be nice to have a certificate to say that you've done it. And I was like, but we know we did it. <laughs> we were there. We signed but, the registration document, right? Yeah, we. we, we but now you've got proof for it forever, and, and, and you, you can put it in a frame, and you can put it on the wall. <laughs> you really got this whole thing so sort of packed down now, haven't you? So. Yeah, I can't put them on my walls. The landlord won't let me. <laughs> well, there you go, then, Leslie. For a question for you: If you could do any training in 2021, what would you love to be able to do as a goal? Well, now, this probably doesn't count in your eyes, but... I'm not judgmental. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday morning, my, my friend in Monaco sent me a couple of photographs of my old judo professor. And I immediately wanted to get back on that mat. Awesome. Now, they are is a really cool New Year's resolution. Yeah, it might not be. Why not? Well, <laughs> I'm kind of a lot older now. And when I, when I left there, I was actually getting, I was actually doing my black belt kata. Wow. And so it's been so long since I even went there that if I even tried my my mind will remember how to do it but I've already had the, yeah I've already had the uh, experience of the mind knowing what to do the brain writing checks your body can't actually <laughs> pay out it's it's not fun if it's not a proper goal then that that sounds like a really good challenge it does doesn't it but I think my I think my best goal is probably going to be getting a dog cool oh. I want a dog, which means that I'm going to have to get work because I can't afford a dog at the moment. Because have you seen how much Noel Fitzpatrick's charges? The super vet. Yeah. I mean, it's five grand for an MRI scan. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, having, having, having been, it's my former profession. So, I, you know, it's like, it's interesting because we're now verging on the fact that it's all technology. And I think what I'm looking forward to, what I, what I would find to, to challenge somebody to say is that could you not actually do things without all the bells and whistles and just do it straight and use your use your mind, use your brain to diagnose something because the signs and symptoms are there. Why don't you trust yourself? You just went through five years of college to go and do it. Why don't you trust yourself? So it's, it's one of those things that's... Uh, yeah, I have a lot of stuff going on at the moment. At this time of the year, I start to, I've been hankering because I've been getting a little bit more exercise and I've been getting it a little bit more and, and looking at stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this walk would be much better if I had a V-slug beside me. Because they don't stop walking. <laughs> they don't stop anything, actually. They bounce off the walls, wherever they are. And that um, would get the fitness level up to get back on the mat. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Yes, so, so this time next year, Leslie, we will be asking you whether you've managed to achieve your black belt. Well, it can only happen in Monaco. 
there we go. And there's, else? An excuse, there's an excuse as the, the, the travel stuff starts to get lifted into exactly, 2021. Exactly, exactly. Well, I know somebody who travelled to Spain yesterday, so I don't see that there's an actual problem. It's getting back that could be the issue. Although if they've, if there, they've got a son, you don't need to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so has anybody else got any fun educational or challenge goals that they've got for next year? I think one of my kind of big challenges is going to be working with the world leaders for mental health program um, and having 25 different world leaders looking at the, the framework that, that we've put together to support mental health across all of those countries and moving that project forward. That's going to be probably the biggest challenge. Challenge that I'm looking forward to is the PSA and getting APA's registration with the Professional Standards Authority um, locked is, down. Is that a certificate? <laughs> yes, there will, I, I think there will be one, yes. <laughs> Text my box, Ed. <laughs> I, I'll send you a digital copy. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's going to be probably kind of the two, two challenges that, that we're going to face pretty early on in, in 2021. Um, and the, the training side, um, I would probably like to get back into physical shapers. Um, it's something that has, has gone by the wayside in building up the organization and everything else. So as things start to smooth out, time can be made available. That's probably where I'd, I'll send my, my efforts on personal challenge. Mm, can we get can we get some form of certification for that you've gone for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> you you know the smartwatches. Oh I, no! I, Do they give you certificates? Well, they they keep giving me these little rosette things. Yeah. It's like <laughs> what is oh, I get this? A gold it star on your daughter. It told me to breathe once. I'm like. <laughs> I'm breathing. What do you mean? <laughs> and I've got a rosette for it. <laughs> you see, this is it. It's, it's just going too far now. It's definitely <laughs> going too far. I mean, your, your unconscious mind already has that down. It does that. Because if it didn't, we wouldn't even be looking at the watches. We'd be lying blue in a corner. <laughs> so, you know. The fact that we're now relying on technology to tell us when to stand up, when to breathe, when to walk, when to... <laughs> Oh, wait, I've just been told to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got a name for it. I call it the Pavlovian paradigm. <sighs> Pavlov's dogs. It bings and you do what it tells you. See, yeah, it just reminds me of Pavlova and that just... No, that's a also story. A <laughs> also a ballet dancer. Actually, I wouldn't mind going to the ballet again. So that's a nice wee segue to come back to Victoria. You'd said you didn't want to stack loads of courses in. What, what courses have you got in mind for 2021 or learning? Um, I don't know, to be honest, like because I just recently um, attended the virtual conference for the British Association of Drama Therapists the other weekend. And it was really just so inspiring. Like I just listened to so many drama therapists talk about their work and like what they do and some projects they run and I was just like yeah this is why I do this and I think one of the ones that stood out was one around addiction and working with addiction so I'd like to learn more about that because I just found the person who ran that workshop was just really inspiring and he really knew what he was talking about so yeah I think that's what I'd like to learn about a bit more because um, I didn't get a chance to work in that client group and training so so yeah, if you're have, you got his, that, yeah. have you got his so, details you can get in touch with him yeah yeah I've got his details so yeah I probably will get in touch with him and yeah find because I think even at that workshop somebody said to him would you be willing to do a CPD like whole day event on this and he said yeah so I will be checking my emails on all that so fantastic um, yeah so yeah it's just like things like that are exciting as well because I think as therapists, it can be quite isolating work sometimes as well. So as what you were saying, Dave, about, you know, collaboration, I think that's really important in this 
field of work as well because yeah you don't want to be too isolated because what we do is really interesting and mm. especially because we all come from different fields of therapy as well it's good to like kind of connect and collaborate across modalities as well so yeah awesome yeah but good to cross modalities sometimes without the idea that you'll be taking away from something and i think that what we what we want to do is we want to be adding we want to make sure that we understand that we're adding to not taking away from mm. wendy dryden calls it professional drift okay and the idea that you can drift between different modalities as your client needs um, once you've been able to spend that time understanding those those different things. And, and you don't have to be a master in any one of those things in order to be able to drift through them as you need. Mm. I think it was a really nice way of kind of explaining the, the need to come away from those silo modalities. Have you just given me an excuse to do more courses, Dave? <laughs> there's, there's certificates in them. <laughs> you can never be talking about these little Easter if we don't get on with this. <laughs> so we've not heard from Sue and Susan. Have you guys got thoughts on courses or learning that you want to take in 2021? Um, definitely for me. Um, I want to get back into volunteer work with Haven. So hopefully when they can lift that I can get back in there um so I miss that a lot I really do um being hands-on and hug hugging everyone absolutely um at the moment I'm studying my teacher yoga so when I qualify in April then I should be able to help people so using the time productively for next year and I'm looking at coaching courses so I like certificates as well and while we've got this time, you know, embrace it so we can help people as we go into 2021. So the more we know, the more we can support in different areas and help help our fellow humans because people are going to need it. They are after Christmas. They're going to need it. Perform we're here to help. Of alchemy. Yes, absolutely. So I like the word because it's a combination because. As, as we meet each individual, obviously we all need, they all need help. We all need help in different ways. So it might be a little bit of exercise, a little bit of mental support, um, maybe a little bit of reflexology. So it's trying to, to diversify the treatments and maybe do a, a duo treatment. So it's an interesting concept, which I'm working on at the moment. So yeah, so doing physical on the couch but also the physical movement and breathing you're talking about breathing on the app which yoga of course very much encourages you and your breathing and meditation so yeah yeah so it's a whole new side i'm looking at cool fantastic so it's, it's amazing <laughs> amazing journey well susan i actually mentor for training well-being coaches so um i'm really happy to have a conversation after this about okay. training and well-being coaching because it's a fabulous okay. course and um let's have a little chat about that <laughs> lovely thank you okay the mistake <laughs> you're ready right. right to work yes <laughs> <laughs> and there's certificates <laughs> 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 And we will now rename this session. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I would like to see your swimming certificate, actually. So uh, <laughs> next I'll, time. I'll pop it in the group. <laughs> <laughs> so what else are we looking at? Because there was a big long list, wasn't there? So we're looking forward to the Healthy Happy 2021. Um, we've already mentioned resolutions and our hopes for the year. Um, we were looking at our goals, which we've talked touched on as well. And we were also looking at goal setting and how we discuss that with our clients. Yeah, because that's one of those things, isn't it? We have to understand that goals are sometimes things that are way out there. And the abyss that's in between them is where a lot of us kind of fall down because it's still way over there, but we have absolutely no idea of how to get from here to there. 
and we get stuck or we get stopped or we get sidetracked. And um, I know that from this week because, you know, I was supposed to send someone an email and I suddenly discovered that I didn't quite know how to write down for them the way that they liked to see it, what we were supposed to be doing. So I'm now redrafting, I think I'm on draft three of this email because Andrew, my husband, who is very good at these things because he knows how to do this, um, keeps telling me, no, you want to do it that way. So I think I'm going to employ him to actually do it for me, just give him the information to you. <laughs> so uh, that may be quite a good thing. But goals, yeah. I think that milestones are also important between the goals. The first and steps be between. When, when I was doing the research for the psychological hive, um, the... Um, the thing around goal setting in the most successful companies and the most successful individuals was never the goal is set out in the future because the world changes before you reach that point in the future. And what you set today for somewhere in the future will, know, will nine times out of 10 not be relevant when you reach it. But the majority of people put all of the stepping stones and all of the, the checklists in place so they can reach that goal in the future. And when they get to the bottom of that list, if they ever reach the bottom of that list, and invariably we don't get there because life happens, they still have to jump to, to achieve the goal. And they don't make that final step. It just It's too far to jump. So the goal is never reached. And it's always put down to, well, we didn't get to this or this didn't happen. And all of the excuses fall into play. What, what I found the most successful people do go, this is my goal and everything I do today has to connect with that goal in some way. And when they do that, the goal becomes achievable because every day they are connecting to that goal and it stops life getting in the way of that target that's somewhere in the future. It's also habit building though. It's one of those things that you stacking habits on top of one another. And yeah. I think it's James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, is very good for putting that out there and, and giving it in very simple terms. And if you want to make a change in behavior, if you want to make a change in your life, then don't, as is the issue with a lot of New Year's resolutions, people are always, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to stop smoking, I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to stop partying, I'm going to stop doing this, I'm going to stop doing that, I'm going to really, really, really have a bikini-ready body by the time the summer comes. And then suddenly you're sitting there going, which one do I pick first? Because we all know that when you stop smoking, it usually means you're going to get hungry. And if you're anything like me, when anybody mentions the word diet, I immediately go look for a chocolate bar. Because it's like, how dare you? How very dare you even mention the that, word diet? That, that mindset is very physical, isn't it? That, yeah. That mindset of I am going to do X. It's very physical. And we don't attach the psychological or the emotional benefit of what that achieving that physical is going to do for us or what we can do once we've achieved it. So, you know, I, I had a client not so long ago who came and said their goal was to get to go to the gym three times a week, but they had no attachment to that other than going to the gym three times a week. Well, if you've got no sense of beyond that then going to the gym three times a week is is meaningless it doesn't mean anything well, I know my gym's got works. a coffee shop I could quite happily go to the gym three times a week mm -hmm. it's, it's about it's about adding extra to it isn't it yeah 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 it's, yeah. Like, it's like when I when I was going to Tibet last year that was that was my goal and I knew that it was over uh, 1500 meters or whatever it is 15,000 like 15, 15 tall oh, it's very tall it's very large low so high um you, you know it's a Jimi hendrix song in reality you really can kiss this guy in this place and <laughs> um knowing that i was going to have to do it i actually went to the gym three times a week and sometimes more and i got up to 5k but i guess that's because you've attached more to it than just the mechanics yeah yeah there's a reason behind it there's a drive for it and, and Dave you said that sometimes life then gets in the way but actually if you think about it in the way that you're talking about it 
life becomes the goal. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what, what I found with the most successful organizations and the most successful people. The goal isn't something, some physical entity somewhere in the future. It's a meaningful point of contact right now. And everything that they do is attached to it. And that means that they are achieving goals quicker, bigger goals, and enjoying the benefits because it's not just physical. There's the emotional and psychological attached to it, which makes up the whole person. So they're using what we know as, as therapeutic professionals and as coaches, that if they use what we know, they can achieve more. Interesting right. enough, also, some of the times that they get tripped up is actually the length of time and then the lactic acidosis that hits afterwards. However, <laughs> this, this guy, uh, James Clear, talks about going to the gym or increasing your, your fitness level. And he talks about just doing something for 10 minutes. Mm. You just do it for 10 minutes, then you stop. And that actually is quite good because it, it puts him there, says, hang on a minute, I'm enjoying this. Why do I have to stop? So you want to do it more? Go for another five. That's fine, not a problem. No, so and, and you a little bit subconsciously, yeah. But then, uh, but then, you know, actually it's quite good to tailor it to that because once you get fed up only doing 10 minutes, your body's actually ready to take on more because your mm. muscles are going, yeah, I can cope with that. I can do that. I'm not going to hurt if I do that. You know, I mean, I remember the last time I did some physical exercise in front of the television. It was, I think it was this this lady who was telling me that I could slim down in six weeks. And uh, oh my goodness, I understood why after I'd done the workout. Couldn't walk for two days afterwards. <laughs> so you I mean, weren't doing that daily then? No, I certainly <laughs> wasn't doing that daily. But there was no, there was no real work up to it, you know. There wasn't at all. And I did. I said, "Well, I'll, I'll just do a little bit." But it was a case of, actually, I'm quite enjoying this. I wonder if I can do a little bit more. Maybe I can do just a little bit more, and then realise that the next day I couldn't have done any of it. <laughs> and and that's the that's the thing when 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 anything is just attuned to the physical, the functionality, invariably it fails because it's only one third of us working towards it. And the, you know, the, the question around how do we talk to clients about goal setting, for me, it is always about attaching the other two thirds of their existence to what it is that they are goal setting. Yeah, so, um, I mean, you, you know as well, particularly with the chronic fatigue situation, that making things in small amounts is really important. Getting that, it's getting the small wins. Absolutely. And we always we do we use goal setting all the all the time, but you know, they they've got to be you've got to have the emotional attachment. I, I say you've got to have all the feels. You've got to have the feels for your goal because then you've got that that emotion invested in it and it it's you and you've got you know, you they've got to be smart, you've got to be able to know when you've got there and all the rest of it. But what is it actually gonna bring you, as Dave was saying, you've got to bring in that that emotional connection and then create those little steps on the yeah, way to always kind of set a long term and a mid term and then shorter goals because for some people it might literally just be getting out of bed yeah yeah it might you know if they're really in a severe chronic fatigue state it might be moving from their bedroom to a different room for half an hour that's a, that's a huge goal for some people. There's no point in setting like I'm going to climb Kathmandu next year if they're not in any state, but setting, breaking it down into those little step by step. So anything that's achievable um, and that, what are they going to feel? And also yeah. energetically, we have to kind of visualization and putting ourselves in that energetic space yeah. makes a huge difference in how we can perceive and achieve what we want to, to get and what we want to be able to do and one of, one of the things that i've done i don't know whether any anyone else has, has used this it's something that i got taught years ago was the idea of working backwards from the achievement so what is the achievement how does that feel what happened bef what was the step before that and the step before that and the step before that and you bring them back to where they are now so they've got a path that says these are the things that get you there because you just traveled in time to that achievement so 
now you know what you can replicate you can do something every single day along those steps that is going to make that that achievement real right now so start with the end in mind yeah yeah i mean it, it's it's one of those things that although i talk about going to the gym last year it took four or five years before i could get to that point of actually getting out to to go out mm. which is really interesting since now i've been in um rest mode for another year afterwards <laughs> And so it's not going to like take you four or five years to get back to it, though, now, is it? No, it's not going to take me four or five years to get back to it. Not after, not after doing it. Not mm. after, not after achieving that. Because mm. yeah. although I, I didn't get the whole way round, I got farther than I thought I was ever going to be able to manage. And and bringing back in Sue's comment, all the feels. How did that feel? Oh, it felt to, amazing. To blow your goals out of the water. Oh, it was. It was like I was 15 again and everything was in front of me and I could do anything. But you also went past the tape, as it were. Oh, you know, yeah. Colin, Colin Jackson, when, when I was running, was, was the, the one person who kept telling everybody that was around on the track, don't run for the tape. Don't go for the goal that is the end. You go for six feet past it and you keep going. Because if you're going fast enough and you, everything's working, you'll go through that tape and you won't even realise that you've gone. And you're round the curve already into the next race. You see, that goes back into the power of your mind because when we were breaking boards in our NLP master track thing, we were breaking boards, we weren't supposed to just look at the board to break it. We had to go through the board, past the board. The board just wasn't there. And it's amazing how... Once you get to grips with that idea and your mind it set will actually help the rest of your body go, okay, we can do this. As long as you don't go too nuts, we can do this. And it's just one more step. I mean, having broken a board, broken an arrow, walked on fire, and um, I stopped at the glass. I didn't want to do the glass. I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I thought, yeah, trod on glass before didn't didn't work out too well for me, so maybe not. But again, when when you've got that thought in your head already, when you've got that experience, you tend to go mm, maybe not, and you tense up. So, like Sue was saying, that it's the small wins, it's the feels, and if you're not feeling it, don't do it. Mm. I find um, when you're you're going for your goals, if you write down a step by step process and then keep a diary, sometimes that gives you the motivation and, and the focus to get from one step to the next to the next. And that's sometimes useful. And even having a visual something to aim for at the end, whether it's a, a picture of, of going on holiday under a palm tree or a particular dress you might like to get into. And they're sometimes quite nice, or maybe that wedding dress. Sometimes it's quite nice to have a visual thing to aim for as well. Right, and I guess with the, the whole writing it down aspect, if, as you're progressing, not just to write it down, but to celebrate the successes as you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah. been blowing out with a whole box of Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> Other chocolates are available. The ambassador is <laughs> celebrating with you. Um. <laughs> the ambassador said they're going to use money. <laughs> so we're all going to be looking at next year and saying, okay, we're up for it. We're going to do this. And we're all going to be coming together again. And hopefully there'll be some more of us too. Because in the in, in the next year, I'm hoping that we can get up to maybe eight or ten even on a meeting, which would be good, and uh, see how this goes. It's interesting because it's almost like just winding up, and watching it go, and see what happens. Mm. And it's it's a wonderful kind of idea that we've been given this hiatus and now given the chance to breathe and look at things and see where we can go now. Instead of just head down, trundling straight through because we're too stressed to look at anything else. Mm. But 
as a community of healers and therapists and teachers, we've been given a space to actually come together and to get a, to know a bit more about what each of us does and to have that understanding will allow us to actually go farther forward and stronger together and actually more respected by each other by that understanding of what we all do. So I'm looking very much forward to seeing you all very soon when we do our retrospective, maybe. But definitely January, bring it on. So thank you, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Take care.